And we are back, and it is time for the else words. This is the portion of the show where we talk about. Well, basically, we're expanding else views with the trailers of uh, some of the trailers from the Super Bowl. Um, that and you know, I'm thinking there's one that we didn't put in here that I don't remember seeing, and that's the um, Avengers Infinity War trailer. Um, so honorable mention to that because I'm sure it's good, but um. Let's just go right down the list here, um, because we got four of the trailers. They are all comic book themed because, well, it's comic book sci fi themed because, you know, why not? It's our show. Um, let's start off with Venom. So, uh, this one is the movie coming out in October. Stars t- uh, Tom Hardy. I believe that's Tom Hardy doing narrating the trailer, right? I'm not sure. Uh, I, I, do I recognize Tom Hardy's actual voice at this point? I, I don't know. <laughs> because i mean it's because it, if if so it's him doing american accent um but well, the, the, the character if we're going off of the the classic character which i don't know why we would because none of this looks anything like anything that i recognize from the comics uh i believe the character is supposed to be american so yeah, yeah. so yeah it's i'm trying to see if it says yeah he plays eddie brock is is his name but this looks a little bit like the um like they're bringing in some aspects on the eddie brock side of flash thompson with agent venom where he's almost like it's to me like he's they're at least with how this trailer is like they're trying to make him possibly be a good guy but i mean it could just be you know me looking into things differently and stuff but I mean, the trailer, it's a, it's a really short trailer. It's only like what? Uh, it, it, a it's mi- a teaser. A it's, yeah. it's a movie that's not coming out until October. So I don't expect them to give a lot away. At the same time, it, it was uh, a lot of him sitting in a MRI machine or seeing him walking and, and behind his shoulders with his head hunched down in two different scenes just kind of meshed together. And it, Remember how last week I was so excited for that new Superman show that starred Superman and was all going to be about Superman, and then uh, we realized, of course, that Superman is not in the Superman show at all? Yeah. This is a movie trailer for Venom that is completely absent of Venom. Like, completely. It, it doesn't even put the name up on the screen of Venom at the end. It shows the venom eyes mask thing and then it transfers into a v which is i recall was the final battle but it it's it's so not anything to do with any of the comics at all in this this teaser whatever it is like none of it makes sense to me as a person who has read venom in comics since he was introduced now i'm not a venom fan per se but this is just like it could be anything it could be absolutely anything else other than a venom movie Mm -hmm. uh because there's no spider-man there there's no uh alien symbiote we we see some black goop in a fucking uh giant glass container that a bunch of scientists are looking at wow that's great i think sony just had a movie like that and everyone was hoping that it was going to be the prequel to venom (laughs) Yeah, I think I think that's one of the things that they're at Sony really strongly in favor of is the fact that Venom isn't an alien. You know, he's he's not the Clintar like he is in the comics. It is I'm gonna say more like what Venom is on the um Ultimate Spider Man cartoon show on Disney XD, where it's you know, a laboratory made creature thing um out of dna that they mysteriously acquired and stuff like that um so but what what are your hopes for the venom movie in all honesty man i i know this is gonna be me being a facetious asshole but i my hope is that it's so like every other episode yeah but in <laughs> honestly i just hope it doesn't come out yeah i just because it's just it feels in every way so far limited mm-hmm. exposure to what it actually is. It just feels wrong. Like it, it feels like the wrong direction 
to be going in when we're seeing the right moves happen with what they did with Spider-Man uh, going in and being a part of the MCU. All of this just feels, might as well call it anti-Venom uh, because it's so totally not the source, again, only from what I'm limitedly seen. Yeah. It's just a goofy mistake. And when you realize that on top of this, they have this uh, silver and black movie that they're supposed to be doing, that is the same sort of concept of it's Spider-Man characters, but it's got fuck all to do with Spider-Man, probably. Maybe it doesn't. Maybe at some point we we do get Peter Parker in this or we we get a tie in for for the other stuff that's going on. But I just I don't get it. And to me. I can't imagine that the people who know the character. See this and give a shit about it. So. If it just turns out to be a good movie that has nothing to do with Venom, the comic, that's mm-hmm. that's fine. And and maybe it will get an audience for that. But I think people will still be going, but it's not a Venom movie. Yeah. Now, now, Carrie's bringing up, he's bringing up on the ground because he said anti-Venom. He's like, anti-Venom? Now that's a spinoff. No, anti-Venom is the parody movie that Auntie Donna is going to do about this movie. No, I thought it was Aunt May. <laughs> Aunt May has she, always been your greatest enemy. Only, she only killed Uncle she, Ben. Yeah, only when she spits the sick beats, yo. The word. <laughs> the next movie um trailer that we're gonna talk about is Well, did you dead... did you did you enjoy the trailer? Did you like it? Yeah, I mean it's yeah, it's one of those so typically I have a thing of I will do my best to quit watching something once I am satisfied. I am not satisfied with this trailer yet. So it's, they still got to show me a little bit more to prove that I want to watch this movie. You know, at least, at the least to where it's not like, okay, I have movie pass. I'm going to spend it on this, you know, movies free. Ha 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 sort of deal. Um, so you're not against it, but you're not necessarily for it yet either. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Um, now a word of what of caution, if they are listening to us, I know they're not, but still, please do not go down the suicide squad route of just releasing these tiniest thing every goddamn day, you know, like, so that's the only thing I asked for anyways, moving on to the, the next trailer, it is the Deadpool two trailer. And I gotta say, I, I love this trailer because of the fact that we're getting more Deadpool and all that, but it, it makes me wish that, we had like Deadpool trailers in uh, uh, like Deadpool the the trailer style in like in the, the whole movie like they on DVD they release this as you know where he, they're doing like some pre production stuff and it's like oh we're we're gonna cut and do the scene with Deadpool playing with the toys like we did in the movie or like we did you, in the trailer. You want to see you want to see Deadpool MST three K Deadpool? Yeah, I, I yeah. I think that's a perfectly cool idea, and I, I I believe that would be something that would sell me on a Blu-ray of the Deadpool movies. Uh, in a in a time where everything I've gotten into now is just streaming, if if that was like, hey, if you buy the Blu-ray, you'll get all this extra content. You'll get the the um, the uh, director's commentary, except instead you get the Deadpool commentary, and you'll get moments where it actually just interspersely have Deadpool like show up on the screen and like start pointing shit out and making fun of it and everything. Kind of like what they do in the, the Spider-Man cartoons is like yeah. you have the Spider-Man cartoon and then you see the small body Spider-Man show up and like, uh, and then, then iron fist, like really literally fisted me it, like that. <laughs> obviously, no, that see, I, 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 think, I think I could see, I see this going one better. They just call it the director's commentary, but then and they have the director starting out and you just hear like him getting knocked out. Like at first, I'm yeah. like gut shot, but I'm like that could be that could be harsh. It's like him just getting knocked out, and then Deadpool's like, "Oh no!" Or he's just he's just sleeping, and then we get this. But you, and then you Wade says, want... "I already took out the director from the first film. You think I'm not going to do it again?" <laughs> yes. <laughs> but no. So I mean, I love this trailer. I mean, now this to contradict what I said about the Venom trailer. Because they don't, they air some stuff in the that will be in the movie. 
but they um they do it in a way with with uh with the comedy you know with you know throwing in you know deadpool playing with the toys and stuff like that i feel like i'm i will probably watch the other trailers because where it might spoil some storyline stuff there's going to be the added funny of things that we won't see in the movie because it's only in the trailer yeah what we talked about at the beginning of the show with marketing and stuff that's the one thing is that deadpool the first movie nailed the marketing in every single way Oh, yeah. uh, did things that were just so out there and worked out spectacularly that built up a huge interest in a film that very easily could have been, you know, like Blade or, or something that was like good and people enjoyed it, but it built a huge audience comparatively and, and was at, at that point in time became the biggest uh, success in R rated movies. Uh, the expectations are very high for what they're going to do with marketing for this, but we've already had the Bob Ross teaser and yeah. now the, the Deadpool playing with dolls and the green arm. Like what the fuck? We couldn't finish that in post already. It's like, it's not like a fucking mustache. Um, <laughs> like th- that, that ability to still shit on other movies and it, not just DC movies, but it's a good burn for a DC movie that needs to be a little bit burned. Um, and then we get real footage of the film and real footage of, of Josh Brolin as Cable. And we get what is tonally like a very serious character walking into Deadpool's world. How is that going to affect the story of this? Because we're kind of splitting it up between two heroes, although it seems like Cable's as much of a, an antagonist as he is another protagonist. It will be funny to see how they balance that and since we've yeah. seen pictures of of domino we know dominoes in this we've also now seen what looks like the the six pack which on on a shot with deadpool and domino we see terry cruz as mm-hmm. a character that looks like he could be straight out of the uh comics of the gw bridge character that was introduced at the time of deadpool and cable war uh shatterstar looks to be standing behind them there's another character that looks like it could be Kane or it could be a num- number of other X-Force characters because uh, it was just so blurry. Like that's some real world building in this beyond two very big characters already with with uh, Domino and with Cable. So like and that's gigantic. It, and, go ahead. Well, and, and also it looks like they're, you know, expanding uh, Negasonic Teenage Warhead. Yes. Which is great. It, so more Colossus, more Negasonic. Uh, the the characters that are already there are going to still be involved in this, but to add that much to it, and the potential was always the hope to spin off to do an X Force movie. This could be the the sequel that. Remember when it was always like the next movie adds another character, so it's not just one villain; it's two villains, and then it adds three villains, and it's like a. Yeah. a a fucking three we knew that we did too much like in this it could be that we're adding too much or it could be they know exactly how to make that balance work yeah. uh i i going off of past experience i i know that they at least know how to do deadpool really well mm-hmm. so as long as they can keep that up i'm i'm definitely along for a ride for this right now and i i they'd be hard pressed to not get my money at this point no yeah definitely um the next one, keeping with the movie side of things, so I'm gonna switch it up here, is Solo, a Star Wars story. Um now this one, it's again teaser trailer, um, aired during the Super Bowl. I think all these aired during the Super Bowl, right? Did the Jessica Jones one air during the Super yep, Bowl? There was, was a teaser for Solo during the Super Bowl. I don't remember if the the full trailer came out until a day later. Okay, yeah. Um so this I mean, this is the, um, I'm blanking on his name, Alden Emmerich. We'll all um, blank on his name because he's the most forgettable part of the trailer. <laughs> yeah, unfortunately. Um, that is so ruthless. I, I feel yeah. bad because it it's, it was always Corey, going Corey, to sit be. sit in the corner and think about what you just said there. <laughs> uh, no, if I think about it, then I'm not going to do the show anymore. It, <laughs> It was always going to be you're the guy who's not Harrison Ford. Yeah. 
And and I don't think they could have gotten the most like Harrison Ford, which they didn't. <laughs> they went in another direction. Uh, but but it it's that's such a hard thing to step into. And I've always said was from when they announced this, I don't want to see someone else be Han Solo. Yeah. I would rather not have a Han Solo standalone movie than to have one without Harrison in the role. But here's 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 what I will give him credit for. He is not doing a Han Solo impression. He is not doing a Harrison Ford impression. He right. is making the character his own. I would much rather that than this is him doing an impression and everyone going, oh, well, he's trying to be him, blah, 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 blah. No, it's him being, it's almost like they're trying to do a James Bondification of the character. Where Right, which is, which yeah. is absolutely, you're, I agree with you. Yeah. Uh, when they did Young Indiana Jones, they had two people who did not look like Harrison Ford at all playing Indiana Jones in that show of, of two different ages. Uh, and and it worked for that show. Uh, mm -hmm. On the other hand, the flip side of that is Donald Glover as young Lando is is my world right now. Yeah. Him in that fucking blue cape and that, that yellow shirt, and I'm just like, that is the movie I, I would watch. That is the spit in the face to my whole statement of like, I don't want anybody else playing Han Solo. But fucking yeah. Donald Glover as Lando. Holy shit. <laughs> and but yeah, I mean, I mean the one thing I will give for this trailer is it looks like they're getting like it still feels dark it feels dark and gritty in a lot of places, but it feels like they're everything a lot of the stuff was practical. Like the speeders, I'm like there's parts in the trailer where I'm like those are just cars. Like they didn't CG out the stuff, but then when I go back, I'm like, oh no, they did. It's just like everything looks super practical, which is is what I love with these Star Wars movies because, I mean, yes, CG is great. I love CGI and all that stuff, but it takes away from the movie in times. And, and the not. other part of the other part of it is what I got of the story from the trailer and with some of the dialogue. It really reminded me of the first J.J. Abrams Star Trek. With mm -hmm. with Han as Kirk in that of like you know just like I'm just a rebel and I'm not gonna play by your fucking rules and then the old uh, captain guy is like well you know your dad made me feel like you were something worth investing in and you're, I know you're rebellious but what are you rebellious against because we gotta we gotta fight on our hands and we could sure use a guy like you I know none of that's actually the dialogue or even the story from it, but it just felt so familiar oh, yeah. in that take. Yeah, I but mean, the, it, the rest of the stuff, especially when they got the whole group together and there were parts mm -hmm. of them in the Falcon and the cockpit and everything felt really fun. And that's yeah. exactly the kind of attitude that I want from my Star Wars. It's what was missing in the prequels for me is that kind of like that group and, and, and just the rogues aspect. I, yeah. I loved that. So before we move I, on, I do think it was a mistake to give Chewbacca a perm, like a full on <laughs> 70s Afro yeah. perm. So probably I, I will wrong way to go. Yeah, I, I will. I will ask you before we talk about the Jessica Jones trailer. This is from from Growly. Who do you prefer as young Indy, River Phoenix or Sean Patrick Flannery? Now I cannot answer this because I have not seen Young Indiana Jones, but you can. Well, Sean Patrick Flannery Flannery had an actual story. You know, uh, River Phoenix didn't really feel like Indiana Jones to me, the cockiness and stuff and, and the, the telling of like how he got the scar on his chin, why he hates snakes. All that stuff was very fun as an intro to that movie. But, but Sean Patrick Flannery actually got to be Indiana Jones and River Phoenix got to be a kid that turns into Indiana Jones. Uh, I, I think that kind of answers your question. I think I think yeah. Sean got the better material to work with, although River did a very good job in the context of that film. Oh, yeah, definitely. So Solo is Solo. A, do you feel like Solo is a must see for you, or is it a wait and see for you? It would possibly right now. It would it would possibly depend on when Last Jedi gets released. You know, if it gets released before Solo comes out, because I have I am still yet to see Last Jedi. 
But this has nothing to do with Last Jedi. I know, but still, there's part of me that feels like if I see this before seeing Last Jedi, then I'm doing it wrong. And stuff. That, that's like I, saying I, I that know, you need it. Is... I know it doesn't make sense, but it's because I've been wanting, you know, tr- trying to save myself to where I go into it completely blind and failing with that. Where with this sort of like, I mean, I want to go see it because where I do like like the actor who is playing Harrison Ford, or not Harrison Ford, <laughs> 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 who, is playing, who is playing Han Solo, um, you know, because I loved him in um in Hail Caesar, um, it's one of those things where just part of me feels like I need to see, you know, watch the Last Jedi first. It's just, it's just, it's. I know it's weird, but it's just how it is. No, that's fine. That yeah. so that's a wait and see. Yeah, that's a. I, I'm not sold on it just as what's here. I have other criteria that still come into play as to why I may or may not see it. That's perfectly fine. I, I it's, it's funny, but I, I can relate to your quirkiness on it. I have plenty of quirks myself when it comes to stuff, and so yeah, that, that's cool, man. Yeah. Uh, for me, right now. Uh, the reason I would see this is Donald Glover. Absolutely. The, 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 the selling point for me is what's got my money and putting me in a seat in the theater is Donald Glover as Lando. Yeah. That does not mean I could not be talked out of it. If it gets just shit talked when it hits, cause I'm probably not going to see it opening weekend, no matter what. Yeah. Um, like this may be something where the reviews actually matter to me. Uh, and on top of that, it, if the footage looks less and less enticing, or if I hear the story just doesn't sound interesting, those, those could be things that keep me from it. It's not an instant. Yes, absolutely. But the most likely thing, and it is a big compulsion for me is that, that thing, that scene in the cockpit of all of them, you know, if you get Chewie and Lando and Han and uh whoever the other new characters are all together and that those kind of moments that's the stuff that looks fun to me that looks like a a kind of firefly thing to me which was definitely attributed a lot to han solo with how firefly those characters were i could i could see really enjoying this i would like to enjoy it uh yeah. i would like it to not to be a hot mess i think some people are rooting for it to fail uh, and certainly there's a lot of things stacked up against it because of the history of, of this film and how it got made eventually, but all the missteps along the way, man, I, I, I both, I'm not in love with the idea of it, but I may actually really like it. I hope yeah. I like it. Yeah. So the final trailer that we were going to talk about. Well, I wanted to talk about one that we, we skipped. I don't know why it's not on the list. It probably because it came out before we did the show last week, but uh ant-man and wasp okay yeah i haven't seen that trailer so okay so that's why it was skipped well Uh, i just just didn't see it in the in our in our slack that's the only reason why i didn't see it yeah uh it looks it looks like a a reasonable follow-up to what ant-man was ant-man's already not my favorite of the marvel movies uh it's it's rewatchable like all the marvel films are but it's not like the the top of my stack of like oh this I'm gonna throw an Ant Man right now, but when it's on I'll I'll like sit and, and enjoy it because Paul Rudd's great. Uh, all the stuff that happened it was fun. It's still kind of like that that stab of oh but if Edgar Wright had actually done the movie the way that he was gonna do it, how good it have, how good could it have been? So I'm interested to see what the person who had to take over after Edgar Wright left can do now developing this film himself as opposed to kind of picking up the pieces of something that was there, like a Ron Howard Han Solo film. Uh, I like how they're utilizing Evangeline Lilly. One thing that I don't hear a lot of people say is that they say that this is going to be like the romantic comedy film of the Marvel Universe, which they've all have, not all, but a lot of them had a little bit of aspects of that, you know, Tony and Pepper, uh, Steve and uh, Bucky, 
and uh, Loki and everybody. <laughs> um, but but in this, they, they're saying, well, it's Ant-Man and Wasp, so it's about the relationship. But Ant-Man and Wasp is actually also uh, Michael Douglas and Michelle Pfeiffer. Mm-hmm. Because we know Michelle Pfeiffer is going to show up in this as his his wife, as you know, eventually Lily's mother. As so Janet Van Dyne. Right. So there is the fact that Ant Man and Wasp as a title, we could be getting misled as that it's about these two characters, but it may be as much about those two characters. Uh it's it's sort of like a given for me at this point that I'm going to go see the Marvel movies as they show up. Mm-hmm. Uh is this at a, at a range of Avengers? No. Uh, is it at a range of Black Panther, which is the other single character getting a movie this year? No. Uh, Black Panther is right now the Marvel movie that I'm most excited for. Uh, above Avengers Infinity War. Like that movie, I'm just so jazzed over because it, it looks like it's doing so many new things. And Avengers Infinity War. After Avengers 2 and then going into Captain America Civil War, I feel like we've just had the Avengers every year for a while that like getting Black Panther and and having that be something so just visually and, and emotionally different from this other stuff. That's more exciting to me. But I'm as far as Ant-Man and Wasp. Yeah, I'm 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 in the chair. You know, I, I can't not be. Yeah. Um, and also what I will I will add really quick if I can find her, but the actress who plays uh Shuri, his sister, great in the uh this latest season of uh Fantastic or of uh, not Fantastic of um Black Mirror. She's in the final episode in there. So good. Um in that. So yeah. Uh Leticia Wright is her name. But yeah, check that. I'm, def, I'm, I'm right there with you on Black Panther, and and actually on Ant Man and Wasp. You know, it's you know Marvel movie it is. It's just one of those things that it makes sense to me to go see it. Um, but yeah, so the final trailer, unless there's another one you wanna nope. spring on, right? Um, is Jessica Jones. Now this is um the Netflix show. The actually, it's funny because they were talking about. Um, on the whole, the merger news, or, or not the merger, the uh, st- Disney streaming service news on. Um, I want to say it was like Come Book Resources or whatever. It was one of those in my Feedly thing, uh, Feedly reader, and I had to laugh because they put Jessica Jones season three. I'm like, wait a minute, it's only season two, right? Like I had to second question and like, ha ha, they messed up, ha 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 ha, laugh at them, laugh at them. But that's besides the fact. This trailer here, honestly, reminded me a lot of Brian Michael Bendis' run right now on Jessica Jones, the comic book. And I love that. Like, I, I'm i loving how that looks and all that stuff. Um, I, I don't know when we're getting it, but I sort of hope that we are getting it soon. In all I feel like it is soon. I, I feel like... I want to say it was April or something, but I could be wrong on that. But um, there was one scene, and I, I only watched the trailer once. Uh, I haven't gone back and, and rechecked it out, but there was one scene where it looked like something was sort of dissolving, and it almost looked like it was dissolving into ants. And there was a scene in Alias where she was dating Scott Lang, uh, and Scott Lang was laying in bed to her with her, and she woke up, and she turned over, and he was all covered with ants. And it was basically it was her head getting fucked with by uh, the purple man, I think. But it just I was like, there's stuff in Alias that hasn't gotten covered uh, in that original series by Bendis that could be drawn from, but obviously can't be done the same way. You know, we're not going to get Scott Lang in the series. Uh, and and there's just so many things that need to change and be added. And since I'm not reading the the current series of Jessica Jones, uh, I'm not sure how much they can even pull from that because isn't part of it that she's married to Luke Cage at this point? Yeah, in the that comic, has a kid. Yeah, she she's married to Luke Cage, has a kid, and all that stuff. 
Um, but yeah, Squirrel I mean, Girls it, or Nanny? Is it Squirrel Girl? It, it was for a while. Yeah, I say I I want to I want to say it was someone else, but um, but yeah, and then there's the bit the friendship with, well, sort of friendship with uh Carol Danvers and uh Jessica Drew, and uh yep. who we haven't seen yet. Um, but in the in the show, it's it's uh Patsy Walker. Yep. Uh, as becoming Hellcat, which is one of the things that I was very excited for uh, in the trailer. She she does this. She's she's so perfect as Jessica Jones with the just like making fun of everything uh, of everybody else. Like she's just so pissed off at all the stuff. Like she talks about working with other superheroes and basically she makes some snarky comments about the Fenders. If there is just like one thing, an episode where she just talks shit about Iron Fist. I'll be so happy. Just like put <laughs> Danny Rand in his fucking place every chance you get because God, he is so fucking lame. He's so fucking lame in these shows. Yeah. <sighs> that I would love. But, yeah. But the the uh, cast from the previous season, the, the guy who lived in her building uh, looks to have more uh, depth than this. We see an introduction of a new potential villain. Uh, we see Carrie Moss come back as the lawyer working with her again and just trying to keep her on the straight and narrow to a certain degree. I liked all of it. it, it it's it's easy to do more than the same of that first season because that first season was so good. Not perfect. There were there are definitely things that they could tighten up. But one of the strongest series in the Netflix bunch uh, so far. No, yeah, definitely. Um, sorry, I'm doing a little thing here because, like, I, I fell down the Wikipedia rabbit hole as we were going through the Jessica Jones trailer. Um, the 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 Tidia Wright, who's playing Sherry, she had she is she has I, I far I don't know if and many other people who have this, she has had a movie come out for 2018 or will have for every month. She has nice. the commuter. She has a commuter in January, Black Panther February. Uh, Ready Player One in March. She skips April, I believe, for and then in Avengers: Infinity War. So out of the first five months, she has four movies come out. In there, I don't know many people who have done that. It seems like something that a Nick Cage or a Kevin Bacon have done. Yeah, but it's 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 really cool. Um, because I saw 2018, 2018. I'm like, wait a minute, those she's in Ready Player One. Okay, cool. I'm gonna go watch that even more now. For more on this Galactic Network podcast, go to GNCast.com. That's G-N-C-A-S-T-S dot com.